Wait, this yeah. is no, this is eleven. Oh, yeah, this last one was eleven. No, was it? No, was it? Okay. Anarchy Roundtable Episode Eleven, Take Four. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get out of those. God damn. All right, already twelve. Two thousand and six. Don't tell anybody. Cheers. Cheers. Wait, wait, wait. 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 That's two things, two things of stuff strung. That's two things, two strikes against you. A fucked up hat and Trump. <laughs> Trump! <laughs> oh, Kyle Trump. Okay. Right, so welcome to Anarchy Roundtable, episode 11. I'm Joe. I'm Patrick. You first. I'm Christopher Cockwell. <laughs> I am Mike. I wouldn't give my real fucking name with that stupid fucking ass. <laughs> what does make that America even mean? Great. Make America great again. Well, Who cares? Look, Trump's going to make America great again. <laughs> That's so, all I have to say on so, it. So that assumes that America <laughs> was once great. If you weren't and brown, now I'd it's like not it. great. <laughs> and he has the power to craft it in some way so as to make it great again. I can't really disagree with that line of reasoning, though. <laughs> uh, it's pretty consistent. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting comments from the, 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 the camera crew. Right. Right. Oh, he's oh, the he's director, director now. now. Oh, the director. <laughs> okay. All right, director Dave. Producer. Producer. Okay. Executive producer. Hmm. <laughs> so what are the topics of tonight? So we've got a couple of topics. Um, Did you take that hat off? God damn it, no. He's going to make America great again. <laughs> I, throw, I, I throw up a little bit in my mouth every time you say that. <laughs> I'm going to keep fucking saying it. I'm sitting next to you, and you're, you're my out here, buddy. <laughs> All right, so we we got a couple of uh, good topics. Um, the hat is actually appropriate for the topic. Um, to vote or not to vote, that is the question. And um, Mike's got a story to share with you about um, visiting courtrooms and uh, watching some of that nonsense that goes on there. So, um, to vote or not to vote, um, we have two opposing um, viewpoints that we we were looking at before we started the show. One is... Is To vote, um, and the other one is not to vote, right? (laughs) (laughs) I just wanted to clarify. Well, that. I mean, yes, those Let's are the take a vote on. It. <laughs> I don't think we should have. I think we should have three opposing viewpoints. Um, we need a third party here, buddy. We were we were looking at some material by Murray Rothbard, and we were looking at some material by Larkin Rose. Rothbard, there's a whole series of quotes and, and interviews with him, um, so you kind of get a general idea of his feelings on it, and then. Larkin Rose put out a video called The Jones Plantation. I'll put that in the show notes. And I think The Jones Plantation is almost an a, a exact refutation of Murray Rothbard's opinion on it. So, just to kind of sum up, Murray Rothbard's opinion is voting is not immoral. And he uses this example if you were a slave on a plantation and you had the opportunity to vote for a slave master that was less brutal than the one that you have, you're still a slave, but you still have an opportunity to improve your life. I mean, that, that basically kind of sums up well, his, I think, his you view. Know. And then Larkin, the Jones Plantation, takes the, the, the idea that um, voting as a slave does absolutely nothing to uh, fix the problem, and and um, it doesn't matter who's running the plantation; it's still a plantation, and and it's going to be bad results. That, that basically sums it up. When you guys say, "Yeah, that makes sense." Like, yeah. I think. Um, so, what are you guys' thoughts? You guys Rothbard think? mentioned uh, Lysander Spooner, and uh, yeah, he did. it's been a while since I read uh, what Lysander had to say for it. But, About voting, yeah. But he uh, he had a strong case that uh, voting for defensive purposes is uh, is very. Uh, reasonable and uh you know not immoral or anything and i i would agree for with that and you know i'm kind of conflicted on this you know i think you know if you have a way to vote to like free people from prison or 
or whatever. You know, if there's if there's a vote to, you know, legalize something, should you, you know, or or to increase or decrease your taxes? I mean, those type of votes, you know, where you're voting directly for something, I don't think is... So uh, like a local election, like a um, ballot? Or, or, uh, or a statewide yeah. referendum on, uh, yeah. you know, maybe, de- you know, making drugs legal in your state or something <laughs> like that. I, I would have a hard time not supporting something like that. But basically, I've never really had much faith in voting and I was pretty much anti-voting and it's been recently that I really came to a, a strong philosophical uh, reasoning behind that is it's basically you know voting could be you know could some people would argue voting violates the NAP because you're aggressing against other people by you know voting for other ones, other people to rule, you know, over them. So right. it could be that, you know, I don't think that's a, a bad argument to say that voting violates the NEP, the non-aggression principle. Well, I heard, which, a, uh, I heard an interesting point on that. Um, so voting is a, it's a proxy mechanism from what I'm kind of gathering. Um, so I, I saw someone's post, I think it was, Voting for a representative is proxy, yes. Well, yeah, but not, like, think about it in the context, like, is it immoral to hire someone to kill another person? No. So, by extension, if you're voting, is that not, in a sense, kind of pushing, not, you're not hiring someone necessarily, like, immediately or directly, but you are, um... Wait, you said it was not immoral to hire Well, it depends. To I mean, someone? if you got a reason to kill them, if it's like for... Uh... Well, no. Is, 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 is the transaction immoral? It Definitely. could be, or it depends on what, why you're killing them, I guess. Well, no. The transaction between the assassin and the person purchasing his services, is that transaction immoral? I would say that, that that's certainly immoral. Yeah, I would yeah, say it of is. Of course. I mean, yeah, if you... I mean, if, But do you think it violates the NAP, then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because so two you're, individuals making a transaction. Are you talking killing or murdering? Murdering, it's immoral. Killing, killing yeah. for uh, 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 defensive purposes or something. Killing and murdering are different. I, I'm sorry. I'm murdering is a type of terms. Murdering, murdering is, is a, is a um, particular type of killing. Yeah, killing could be in self-defense, and you could hire someone to kill someone as a form of self-defense. Sure, but, if they were threatening you or, or whatever. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you hire someone to murder somebody, I would say that's an immoral act. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. It's interesting because the guy who takes the money and does the killing is, or does the murder, he's the one who actually does the murder. But right. you're actually you're incentivizing him to do so. It gets you're, a little, you're there's a, a little bit of a gray area. You're, you're a least, party to that crime. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, you're a party to the crime in the context of what I would argue the current state of affairs. But if we were to look at things at an individual level where you're saying people are, indivi- are indivi- individuals and they are responsible for their own actions, that murderer or that assassin... Uh, it's, it's really their action that causes. Well, he's responsible, and so is the person who hired him. But yeah. but, but but where do you? I guess. Okay, we've had this argument explain? with uh, Jeff and James, where they were saying that like Obama sending people to war to kill other people is not necessarily is not really culpable. Yeah, it's I, the I people. Dis- I disagree, disagree with that. I think. Yeah. I think the person. You know, uh, the Nazi death camp guard and Hitler are both. But it's more it's more nuanced culpable. than that, right? So you have like teenagers who are getting baited into going to a military, right? And they, you know, they, they're going to get they're still yeah, responsible, so, and they're sure they're still responsible, uh, but they end up in a, in a coercive situation. Every, everybody in this is coerced in some manner, which is what makes it really weird. And I don't vote at all. I don't want to vote. I would feel dirty if I voted, but I think it's difficult to make the case that it is. Immoral because the coercion exists already. The immorality already exists on you. And, and um, can you pull that back a little? He's, he's like very sure. I mean, does that make sense? Um, say that again. The last part. So, like, um, if if one is voting, let's say to legalize, it zoomed all let's the way make out. It, like an easy, an easy legalize thing. what? Legalize drugs or whatever. Yeah. Because because let's say they're a drug user and they don't want to be in a cage. They don't want to get shot. They don't get in the cage. Um, God, it's like. I don't know if it's moral or immoral because they've already kind of got guns being threatened at them already. Well, no, that's self-defense. Right? I don't think I don't think voting in self-defense is immoral. 
So, and I think that was uh, so voting yeah. itself can't is is great. It's the and crux it's of like Lysander's argument right. is voting in self defense is not necessarily immoral, but voting isn't voting always in self defense. No, 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 because if you're voting for a, a person that you want to to further your cause and that causes to you know make more taxes or something or like, whatever. So if you voted for Ron Paul, you're clearly voting. That's that's a defensive move because you're you're mm. voting to have less well, we, of all of this. We had a previous guest stuff, uh, but if you vote for like Bernie Sanders, you're probably voting for him to take stuff from stuff. other people. Yeah, totally. And you so know, so like I have a lot of really progressive friends, and 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 they don't. I, some of them well, are, are feeling, feeling the burn. We are they progressive. Are. Yeah. We want progress. We're, we're good people. You know, politicians That's... are master manipulators oh, of language. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's so a lot of these, like these people are fairly, fairly ignorant about this stuff. They're voting because they don't want people to go to war and die. So they think they're doing this immoral act. They, they want to get this guy in office yeah. so that people don't go to war and die. All they also want all the free shit, but, but. So it's like I, I I empathize with that position. There could be somebody who votes for a Democrat, think a, thinking that yeah. wrongly thinking that that's going to end a war. But, and I don't think that's necessarily an immoral act to do that. I mean, they're they're trying to make less death and destruction I've, in the I've, world. I think it's foolish. I mean, it's it's not going to accomplish what they hope. And I wouldn't do it. But I don't think it's necessarily immoral to vote for the peace. It sounds candidate. like voting isn't a moral or it's an aesthetic issue, and it's like the intention behind it is where that's what it I sounds think, like. You guys yeah, are yeah, and I don't think Larkin even argues that it's immoral in that no, video. He just He's marked, just saying it's ineffectual. It's completely right. ineffectual. I think it is I, very I often a, immoral. I think it is very often immoral, but it, it could it's, be immoral. It's it's really how do you judge well, motivation sure. and? Well, you could be a really thing. shitty person and vote for really shitty things because you hate people. So you could do some really yeah. immoral. You know, I used to always yeah. think that the reason you know people voted or politics or believe this is is most people. I always thought that most people believed in freedom. I find that not to be as true as I thought they, before. But, but most people, Democrats, are. Republicans. Even they're like for the, their version yeah. of freedom. They think that well, they think that free stuff is freedom. <laughs> yeah, they think <laughs> free health care is freedom. Yeah, you, you, how could you deny someone health care? Well, their their their, their, their mentality is um, it's not freedom in the context that we see it, where you're where you're you're free to pursue your own things. No, their their type of freedom is you're free from the things that are constantly. Pestering you, you're free from suffering. Positive pain or, freedom, or free positive from whatever, freedoms yeah. are not free. Was that Roosevelt? Uh, he had a list of things like that: freedom from want and stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah. No, I was going freedom to s- from want. That's the stupidest thing I've ever <laughs> fucking heard in my he, life. He's amazingly. Stupid. If you didn't want something, why would you? <laughs> no, why would you wake up in the morning? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> my contention with voting is, it's um, it it inherently. How do I phrase it? It pushes the idea that um, you're always going to be taking from someone else. No matter what you vote for, it's always taking from someone else. So, there's no... Even defensive freedom, people who sit there and say, well, I want my liberties and I want my rights to be maintained, what they're fighting against is... um, what they're imposing, and it sounds odd, but it's kind of like the minority imposing their will on the majority, saying, leave me the fuck alone. No matter what, voting imposes will. So there is no such thing as, in my, in the way I understand it, as defensive voting or good voting or whatever you may have. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, I, a, it's a mob rule, sort of. But it, yeah, for sure. But it, it's defending yourself against... Some sort of evil could be, or it's the illusion. It's the illusion. Yeah, thing, it's, so. it's an illusionary <laughs> thing, really. I mean, it, it, I mean, yeah. Like referendums can be less <laughs> problematic. Yeah, if you're voting no, but on I the have increase a, in a taxes, real problem in voting for leaders. Well, yeah. no, because there are people that want higher taxes. Yeah. So you by voting no. To higher taxes, but, yeah. you are imposing against no, what they no. want. You cannot impose a lack of aggression. Yeah, I. Uh, that's not an imposition. That's is voting an imposition at all. 
Because yeah, we because we're just kind of like filling out a piece of paper and shoving it in a box. But if you're voting, like, for this system rulers. exists. It's erected. It's around us. It's not going away because we don't vote. But if you're voting I'm, for rulers, it's more likely that it's uh, an aggressive act. You're definitely holding up the. If you're voting that, for that, that, referendums that, that, that. or something, it could be. It could be argued that you're voting for in a defense of purposes, but if you're mm-hmm. voting for a ruler, yeah, you might be voting for this ruler because he's less likely to take your right, rights away. But, you know, when uh, Rich Paul was on, he, uh, he he finally said that, you know, he voted, he wanted Rand Paul to uh, be elected because he's more likely to allow uh, New Hampshire to secede from the Union. But I think that, <laughs> and what I said in that episode is that is the crux of the problem is that people always have their agenda, and that's the the problem with voting is everybody wants something, and they're trying to vote themselves that something. So everybody, you know, what was it about five ten years ago that the the people collecting from the government finally outnumbered the people paying into the government? You know, yeah. the people that net collected. Outnumbered the people that uh, net paid. <laughs> you know, I, I don't even think that like voting for somebody is the same as hiring somebody. Because mm. you see, you may you're maybe making a suggestion. They already have your money. It, it doesn't really matter. Like, you're not. Well, you're not no, giving. If there's a new anything. senator to the table yeah. versus the senator that's out that's incumbent. If I if the vast majority of us vote for the new senator mm-hmm. we are in a sense hiring him well there's one well, there's one difference in that there is going to be a senator and at some point it gets down to there's one of two people but it always, who is going to be yeah. that senator yeah, like if, if you hire leader, somebody right. if you hire somebody then that job exists right if you don't hire them that job does not exist but, not necessarily but, but how that job can exist but not by prob- you the but how is, is you can't you don't have anyone to fill the position? But there, how is how is voting for the lesser of two evils moral? How is just say I used to always use this example, it's maybe not as good, but say Hitler and Saddam Hussein were running for president. Trump. <laughs> same, same thing. Whatever. Hitler. Kyle Trump. Whatever. Hitler and Trump. But Hitler and Trump are running for president. Who do you it, vote? I think which one? Is, which one is the most moral choice? Yeah, I think it falls outside of the realm of morality. I, I don't think you can know that going in. I think that not shit that you Trump could. Said. That's why it is kind of immoral. Right again. He's talking so, about. All this racist stuff and anti well, let's, this let's group make, of people. Look, Joe, he doesn't it's sound that much America great again. He doesn't okay. even sound that much different than, than <laughs> Hitler. He's joking. But let's have a quick straw poll here. <laughs> no. <A> straw poll. <laughs> Voting for representatives, good or bad? Well, obviously it's bad. Okay, so moral is, or immoral? It's amoral. It's amoral. Okay, yeah. what's your uh, good or bad voting for people? It's stupid, but I, I, and I don't vote, um, but I don't think it's necessarily a, a good or bad issue. I think it's, it's an amoral issue, for sure. What do you think, Trump supporter? <laughs> no, seriously. We're going um, to, like, I'll get inside. a picture of you in that hat and label you as a Trump supporter. <laughs> well, as long as you call me Christopher Cockwell, <laughs> um, my point of view on it is, um, as Joe alluded to in an earlier episode, when you are living under coercion, there are no moral choices. Yeah. Yeah. And to that end, uh, voting or non-voting becomes kind of immaterial. I prefer that people do not vote. but So you're against voting, but you don't necessarily think it's immoral? No, because we aren't in a system that allows for morality. Well, yeah. I would say That's that... The point where I was saying... My, I, I, Hold that back up, too. My opinion is that voting... I haven't voted for a long time, and I thought it was... uh, But my opinion on this situation is that voting is stupid, and if you're voting for a person, it's most likely immoral or violates the NAP. But let me see that again. I always thought for years, though, that, um, you know, Dave put up voting doesn't matter... Voting does not affect outcome, so fucking what? I, I agree with that 100%. <laughs> yeah, I think we probably but, all agree with right. that. But no, I, I, 
I have a really good story from I was probably 10 years old and my uh, maybe 8, 10 years old. Anyway, my brother's friend, her parent, their parents, you know, came straight from Greece, didn't speak that good of English. They'd take their 12-year-old son to the voting booth, the woman would, and ask him who to vote for. And, uh, but that's the whole thing. You just, you, voting is just a fucking game. It, even, I think it is immoral, but, but my original objection to voting was it's fucking stupid. It's a waste of time. It has no basis in reality. It's just a, a popularity contest. They did a study, I think it was 70%. They had a 70% success rate. And just showing people, like, on the other side of the country, who would you vote for by just their pictures, their face. And they they had a 70% um, chance of predicting the outcome of the election. Yeah, just yeah. by looking at some guy's face wow. and you don't know who he is. Cause this it's is like, an interesting yeah. study done by... Moving forward a little yeah, bit. Yeah, interesting study by, like, <laughs> I, think it was, uh, I think it was Stanford University that kind of, uh, that kind of showed how ineffectual voting is. I think is. it was Kyleford. Kyleford? <laughs> Is here with him, Joeford? <laughs> either way, it showed that, like, you know, regardless of how people voted or what they wanted, there was basically a 20% chance, one way or the other, that their ideas would be enacted as, as legislation. Yeah, until, you get to get a cert- until you get to a certain level of, of power in corporations and things like that, it just doesn't even fucking matter. It's, no, it doesn't, doesn't matter no. a fucking bit. And it's, it's you know, just a is, joke. I think there are millions of people across the continent, probably billions around the world, who see that. Who? What's the turnout? Everybody sees Because the turnout for, is so promoting. small. Yeah. It's like 30 or 40 30 percent. Percent. The reason right, the yeah. turnout is so small it's is because everybody, everybody who doesn't vote sees that their vote doesn't matter. Yeah. If they thought that their vote had the ability to affect the amount that they're taxed, whether or not they're going to war, oh, yeah. whether or not there's free totally health care. If they thought that their vote really affected, these are major things that have a huge impact on your life. If you thought that you had the power to affect that, you would go to the polls and vote. Well, there's, it, there's and people don't by the millions. No, there's but there's something to be said about uh, people who do vote. People who do vote tend to have the opportunity to vote. A lot of people who vote are. Um, single moms and people who are retired and young people who don't have jobs. Most of us who do work don't have that opportunity. We go to work, we put in our eight or nine or ten hours, and the voting polls are closed by four o'clock no. before we even get home from work. We get four o'clock. It's open until no, like seven. No, they're open eight. Seven or eight. Well, yeah. even then, it doesn't eight, matter. Eight, because very most, easy to vote. Most people can vote, and if you work that many hours, you can get an absentee ballot. Oh, it's very yeah, easy. You, well, if it's, you don't need any excuse. You can get an absentee no ballot. There's no excuse. No, not vote. necessarily. The people who don't vote don't There's no vote excuse. They don't, they don't, you should vote. Anybody can vote. They make it so that anybody can vote. Easy. You can get an absentee ballot if you work twelve-hour shifts. Um, you don't need a really, reason to get an absentee yeah, ballot. You could, yeah, it's really easy to do. They're open till eight o'clock at night. You Vast can probably majority, vote. If you really are aggressive, you could probably vote ten, twenty times. It's, it, <laughs> if smart. it's really close to where you live because they have polls yeah, everywhere. Unless you, live way out, that, yeah. unless you live way out in the country, um, and. There's a really long number of hours that you can vote between. It, almost everybody could vote if they wanted to. But I, you know, they don't want to. I don't, don't know. It's just it's pretty easy. Look, I, yes, you are you are correct. It is kind of easy. But what I'm what I'm thinking about is when I come home from work, I don't want to leave my fucking house. And if I've got kids and a wife and other if shit, if you thought that you had the opportunity to reduce the amount of money the government is taking from your wallet by Three thousand dollars a year. Are you telling me that you wouldn't get in your car and drive three blocks to the voting uh, to save yourself three grand? To save yourself three thousand dollars. That's no, that's where well, self defense no, voting. Nobody thinks consider- that they're going to get that. Nobody thinks that their vote matters. That's why they're not doing it. And you're but making this cons- argument, but if it was really important, you could take the entire day off of work and go vote. Because what are you going to make? One hundred fifty, two hundred bucks a day. What's the average person making a day? If your vote, the stuff that government does impacts you 
far more than one day's worth of work. Yeah, right? What if you're a drug dealer and you make three thousand dollars a day and you get the vote to, to legalize <laughs> no, no. drugs? But let's let's. <laughs> I wouldn't want to legalize them. I'd be like, I'll, it'll cut into my income. Yeah, yeah it's horrible. Horrible. Not not really well. But we gotta we gotta <laughs> no we gotta consider <laughs> uh, we gotta consider okay if you want to go with the defense oh. the voting thing. It's more applicable at the local level than it is at the the national level. That makes sense. Yeah. Sure. At the national level, your compete your vote is one of thirty five. No, not uh, three. Uh, um, I can't think of the term. Um, Somebody ninety four million politics. people. All politics. That's is how local. many people vote at the national level. Well, it's about thirty percent of the population. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Okay. It matters in the states that are close. I don't think right. It's so, at at the super at the national level, yes, your vote really doesn't fucking matter. But, Even in the local level. But at the local level, I it lost depends. in the library millage. I didn't vote in it, but my idea lost in the library millage. But if you by like voted. a thousand people, <laughs> if I would have voted, it wouldn't have made one bit of difference. It would have lost by nine hundred ninety. <laughs> yeah. So, but. in the thousand, there was like maybe like four thousand people who voted or something, well, but, and it was like. You're not addressing the three thousand for and one thousand against or something. Yeah. It was it was way lopsided. Yeah, I would, there I would, wasn't a chance, snowball's chance in hell that the millage wasn't going to pass. And it took them three tries. They kept every time it didn't work. They just put it on the ballot again. They, they did put it again. No, they, put it again they put it again. They put it again. And eventually the library that millage passes, and then it'll yeah. stay there forever. I just wrote a check out like nine dollars worth of it was just for the library millage. Um, and and that was a tax I didn't have last year. Now, I would like to see though before you, you know, you're making this argument, and I I have no real issue with it other than I would like to see the partici- participation rates of local versus national before I start to assume that um, the participation rate is really low. It's lower for local than yeah, national. It's very low. We had like four thousand people vote in this whole town. It's probably vote. because it's not advertised. It's, but who cares? It's not, <laughs> it's not all over the TV. But you know what it's always it's made like me... It's like people don't vote for in midterm elections like, either. It's yeah. rational ignorance, because you already know this stuff just, can't work. I just read sure something that they're going to change the... Uh, they want to change the... Um, was it the congressional or the local elections to coincide with the president presidential elections so more people would vote? But, well, it, some of them do. Some no, they were just talking... They're doing. They're changing something in Michigan to... Uh, to have some more local type elections coincide with the presidential election, you know, so you, more people will vote. You said something that 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 uh, made me think of of an argument for the draft that I've heard. For the draft. For the draft. Not right. not by me, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, right. so basically, you you said you know if you had this opportunity to to go out and 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 vote with some people because. This vote was about whether or not you were going to go to war and, like, fucking die, right? right. Like, if you had to do that, oh, yeah, holy shit. Yeah. So I've heard people say that we should reinstitute institute the draft For women. Be- because... <laughs> be- it would make people anti-war. Because people be anti-war <laughs> and they would get out and they would vote and they would be involved and we yeah. wouldn't go to war so hastily because everybody would... I was like, holy shit. I think... I've heard... Uh, Wait, I mean, like, how many countries have forced the, their people into war didn't stop them from going to war? Like, no, I, I heard the thing I is that actually is the politicians... That. No, the politicians... Should have to do the fighting. That would be that would probably end all yeah, the wars. If all the politicians over. had to do all the but fighting. But you know, like I heard an argument so against that. It's like, job. what if you made employment in the military voluntary and you could just quit? I think that would do a much that better. That would be much better. Oh man. shit! We'd never go to war because yeah. everybody would quit every time. I like that. I've yeah. heard that one. That's actually a good idea. That's way better. Because freedom's always better than coercion. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I think I was gonna what you were saying it's about kind of the slave enlistment is slavery in a way. It's selling yourself for it's indentured slave. servitude. Yeah. Uh, well, you yeah, not slavery. <laughs> well, it's very similar to slavery. It's just a, mm. there, there are some technical differences. Apples and oranges, the, but it's not that much different. It's not. Now, Mike, you made the point that the politicians should uh, serve if there's going to be a war. Um, my thought process, it's been along the, that same line when it comes to government spending. Whatever the government spends should come out of the congressman, like directly out of his bank account. Yeah. That would stop. So <laughs> all the taxation <laughs> like, should go directly into the Congress people's bank account. They it already does. Up. You know, my father said it. It's very similar to the idea that the limited liability corporation is the reason why corporations are so goddamn. Evil. My father always said it best. He goes, "You're really good at spending other people's money." Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Yeah. If if the tax system were okay, so they had a. 
with today? It's 13.57, so it needs... Got it started again there, David? Yeah. yeah. So if the if the politicians had a fixed ceiling for their salaries or whatever, and they could not really adjust it except for maybe the rate of inflation, um, but all wars, all debt was accumulated by them personally, they wouldn't fucking go into debt, and they wouldn't so, fucking go into debt. There wouldn't be any money for that anyway. I mean, how, how much does a war cost? Now, now, we're, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> now we're starting to get into the ridiculousness of how to redesign the evil organization that is the state. No, I, so I, 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 is know, less I know. Evil. Just, I know. He brought it up. You know, I yeah. used to you know, do I, this kind of stuff before I became an anarchist. I, know, I used I to sit like, there and like imagine constitutional amendments in my head but, to, in order to make the government... like actually it worked like one thing i noticed about the constitution is it has no teeth that you know it says the government shall not do this the government shall not do that but it doesn't say what should happen if the government does it anyway and well, i think that could be in paper george bush I, was right when he said it's just a piece of paper yeah my last uh <laughs> my last you know i thought about this for years and years and my last thing which kind of like fucked me up when i became an anarchist a couple years ago was, <laughs> I was my last idea <laughs> Was that the only fair way to do elections is to hold a lottery mm -hmm. and you elect, or you, 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 if you want to be elected to an office, you join the lottery and they pick, you know, whatever, 10 people win the lottery and those are the 10 people that can run for. Guess whatever where they used to do office. that? They used to do that in Rome. Mm -hmm. I know, and that's yeah. probably, if you're going to do that kind of thing, that's probably the best way to do it. Well, okay, but, but here's but the thing. That's, yeah, I gave our, up on our, that line of reason. Not for, our, all, for a lot of things. I don't so, know if it was for politics, but... But our but, conversation for, became, you know... I thought it was Defensive Greece, voting is, it or really, Greece, or is, is voting worthwhile. But by oh, extension, by extension, it bleeds into, naturally, how do we redesign the beast? Yeah, that's that's where we ended up we going. Don't. Yeah, we ended up going into so how this to was redesign completely the beast. Inevitable, the argument, beast. Or as a, yeah. a discussion. We, we went into that, and none of us... Well, oh. the interesting thing about it, though, is that before we became anarchists, at least two of us, I don't know about you guys, um, we had these kind of thoughts prior to... I did, um, yeah. So you had the same kind of thoughts. I think it's it's kind of a step in the um, the thought process to becoming an anarchist. A lot of people are you're searching yeah. for solutions, and before you ever hear of anarchy as a solution to the problems with the state, you start trying to redesign it. Well, that's and, well, that's what a lot of libertarians and anarchists do. They they just sit there and try and redesign the state which, as much as they can. The campaign for a longer leash is nothing more than an attempt to. Which, we got to go back to the campaign constitution. Campaign for a longer leash. What, where I've never heard that phrase this before. The campaign so for game. liberty. <laughs> is that what it's called? <laughs> that's, that's, such a, that's the greatest. That's the greatest phrase ever. Yeah. Yeah. Campaign for a longer leash. Because that's what they're that's looking for. So, so they, awesome. awesome. they want minimal government. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought you just pulled that out of your ass. I was like, that's, yeah. that's beautiful. It, 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 we we can credit. Um, um, Lou Fien for, okay. for, for pulling that out of his head. Um, <laughs> Lou, Lou, Lou pulls a lot of shit out. Yeah, Lou is great. He was. <laughs> if you want to see some stuff from Lou Fien, he was on episode nine of the Anarchy Roundtable at really? Winterfest. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes, yes, he was. But, but you like know, when the, the idea of people um, uh, going to war as politicians or or being responsible for it sounds like sort of. Uh, the idea that without government, the corporation as it exists wouldn't exist because you'd kind of be responsible for your company out of your bank account. There wouldn't be this this extra fictional corporation oh, that gets tried and goes to court right there, and has right. money taken from it. But your bank account as a as a, as a whatever, some dude who's polluting something or being a dick somewhere, Monsanto or whatever, you're, you're fine. So you just brought up yeah. a whole like show topic right there. Yeah. That would be a good um, topic because yeah. because government's the same way. And the government doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. It's just people. But those people but don't my, get in trouble for the crazy shit. My thing is but that, by, by the same extension, that argument that you're proposing is any type of association of people. Uh, and and I'll take a little contention with this. And sure. You can no, go ahead. On this. Um, any association of people are more or less a fiction. 
whether it be government, whether it be a bunch of anarchists hanging out at a round table, which is a square rectangle table. Fuck you, Joe. You fucked this all up. <laughs> <laughs> at least mine was rounded. Yeah. Hey, at least, at least, at least he was consistent, sort of. It's philosophically round. What oh, shit. We, we've point? had an ovoid table. We had Mary point out that we had a square table. We've had an anarchy couch. Um, Doesn't matter. Yeah. So the point is, is that even government to an extent, as long as people agree on its existence, in a sense, it is, it is voluntary by those who are participating within it. Sure. Okay. Who believe within it. So really, I don't consider it voluntary because it's fraud. Mm. That's a good point. Well, their their interactions with others isn't. isn't well, when and you that's kind of where he was going with the seventeen year olds. These seventeen year olds are defrauded into going to war. But okay, would you argue that a corporation is fraud, or a company is fraud, or a business is fraud? Because you, you're basically building off of fiction, right? Well, there's a, it's a legal. It's a legal. It's a. It's a, it's a well, legal. you don't think businesses everything, exist within anarchy? No, Every, they totally would. Everything would still fiction. But they, but they wouldn't be the. They wouldn't have the legal protections of all the guns of government to be able to to get rid of other competition and and that sort of thing. Exactly. No, but yeah. they would have no. they would have legal comp- They would have legal protection in the context of what the stockholders and the employees. And that's fine. Them. Whatever. Whatever well, yeah, I guess works, so. works. Right. Right. I guess what I would say is that is that as a group of people, whether you're a, a, whether whether you're existing within the concept of, of a government or a business or whatever, the, the group itself doesn't have rights. It doesn't have the, those universal things that exist for each of us individually. I think that's what I mean when I say that a government doesn't actually exist, not at least in the same way as an individual does. I'm not going to say that. It, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, you could really take the argument really, really far and say something like, well, then a tree doesn't exist because it's just a bunch of atoms. Well, I know there's an absurd, yeah. there's an absurd place that that can go. That, Forest that doesn't idea. exist because yeah. it's a yeah. bunch of trees. That, that kind of thing. But, um. But by the same argument, it's, I don't, it, I don't think it's that absurd given the fact that these businesses and government or any institution yeah. that exists is just merely just a bunch of people inside of a building. Yeah. I guess my yeah. original point was if the, the, the owners of, of, of businesses were uh, liable for their businesses out of their own bank accounts. Well, I they think would probably some of them might act differently well, than um, in the same way that a government might act differently if their own bank accounts and their own physical bodies were uh, were sort of for, up for collateral. Well, I've heard arguments. You know, the problem with corporations. You know, corporations are people. You know, yeah. according to the Fourteenth Amendment. Well, but but yeah, I'm saying I, I the problem with corporations of people. I'm just I, 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 I like I'm being it. sarcastic. Very yeah. sarcastic. But no, the problem with corporations is there's no real responsible person. Where <laughs> I think we all believe in self responsibility, and if if you own that corporation and you cause someone, you know. You know, then you get into, the, if you're just a stockholder, where does your I, I, culpability I start and begin? The idea that the stockholders are owners is something that might not exist in an anarchist society. Right. They would be investors. They would be investors. Yeah. It would be possible so to invest in a business similar to the way that a stockholder does. Yeah. So, yeah, there would be... But they wouldn't be considered, like, necessarily... Ownership. In you remember, like, way. Stephen Mullen, you talk about sort of the stock market and how the uh-huh. reason why it exists the way it does is because of taxation and that money's forced there to, to defer taxation. Yeah. And Some then, of in it. The, in the, re, in the, in the mean, anarchist it, world, you would you would invest in a company probably because you knew something about what they did. And if you... you I uh, think there would still be index funds. Yeah, but if, if you invested in a society. company and this company caused injury, then the person that is responsible for that company that caused the injury... Would be responsible for that, and I the person that, that invested in that would would their money would be wholly responsible. Their for that money, too. the money that they put in, I don't think it would be that much different from what we have now, except for you wouldn't have the government explicitly protecting corporations, like in the sense that you're allowed to pollute X amount here or there. If yeah, you put well, pollution on somebody's property. That's a Almost. trespass, okay. and that's not the way that it works now. We have the EPA. <sighs> Probably ninety um, percent of laws nowadays, yeah. if not more, ninety-nine. I don't know how what the percentage, but the vast majority of laws are to protect corporations. Right. We, yeah. we wouldn't have They're all this written pro- by corporations to protect corporate. They are to protect you from, you know, bad food or bad this or car accidents, but. 
all they do is make it easier for the large corporation to push push out the small guy. That's why there, there's a lot. That's of, why there are no hardware there, stores. There's no there. mom and pop stores. Period How much anymore. Time is left on it? But so either way, are you the only one who thinks that voting is full on an immorality, or do you still do you mostly vote? immoral? Yeah, yeah, mostly. I I think mostly voting for a person to represent. Because you're I've voting thought, for. I've thought about this. Issue I, if if you're an anarchist, time, so. okay. If you're an anarchist and you believe that um, that rulers are wrong, and you're voting for rulers, then how can you uh, justify that? Yeah. Makes sense. How can you justify voting for rulers? Well, yes, if if you're, you may be able to justify it by, you know, self protection. You might be able to justify it by voting for this fictional person like Jeff, who never would have a chance of, uh, of you know, Why abolishing not? government. Yeah. But he's but like Jeff. Jeff has been on our show a number of times. Um, he was on episode three. ten. He was three on, or four times. He made a shirtless cameo in episode <laughs> six. <laughs> so like, it sounds like the four of us, none of us, are going to be voting anytime soon. None of right? us are voting. No, we don't no. vote. So I what would voted. be like if we wanted to change things? Donald Trump. How do we go about that? I've never done a single a single <laughs> well, act act of activism in my life. So you know, you're doing to, activism yeah. right now. I guess so. I, this, pre, this I, uh, I uh, brought up in uh, oh, the Up North episode. That um, we should, uh, if if somebody would, is that a memory? So really? enough memory to if, or just, if someone, stuff off okay, phone, whatever. Like. If someone, <laughs> if someone would legally change their name to no one and vote for office, I would strongly consider supporting them. All right. <laughs> but anyway, another thing is, um, the get out the vote thing has always drove driven me nuts. It's like, oh, you should vote, you know, drive people <laughs> to vote. That just <laughs> always even. You know, long before I was an anarchist, it always made me sick because you're getting people that Who know nothing care. about anything. Yeah. Actually, they're going to vote for the name or vote for this. They're going to vote the for the party. The reality is there is nobody who's educated enough to pick. Oh, my God. Have now, you ever no, voted? I've I mean, voted before. The ballot before. is this long. No. Oh, and, is this, and what I, this is what I was talking about before when I brought up the topic of rational ignorance. It is rational to be ignorant of all Everything. of the choices no, that you have on the ballot because of the chances that you're going to have an impact. Even when I voted, though, I there was like maybe effort, it would take to one or two again. people or one or two issues out of like 20 or whatever that I even had an opinion on. And so I am probably in the vast, vast minority. I would only vote for those one or two things and either leave the rest blank or sometimes I would... A lot of people vote straight libertarian. Yeah, straight party. That's what people do. You know, I would do protest uh, votes. Yeah. Which is, which I always considered voting libertarian as a protest it vote. Kind of is, yeah. And it's I've been doing that for I years. Voted, I voted twice in my whole life. I voted more than Evil that. fuck. I even <laughs> voted in some of those chancy local elections that you said nobody votes in. Yeah. I voted yeah, I against the library millage one of the three times they put it on the ballot. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that's another point I wanted to bring up is, is, you know, where does it start and stop, you know? All right, I voted for this out of self-defense, but, you know, I was there, so I voted. But, I mean, if you're voting, it's it's like a slippery slope. Here, here's it's a very slippery slope between voting in defense or, or, or being aggressing against other people. It's interesting. And I think and nine Danny times said out of ten all more. aggression. It's almost um, it's it's mostly all aggression. So if if it's aggression, then how can you say it's not wrong? Well, by okay, if if you're voting, by extension, you are imposing to, your will on yes, other people. You are trying to do so, and voting, no matter if you win or lose, you're still participating in the process of coercion, right? You are legitimizing it. Yeah. So no matter what, it fundamentally is immoral, but by extension, I, I give it a little bit of a saving grace in the context of it's your, this is what we have. This is what we can work with. Yeah. It's our tools that we can try to theoretically govern our slave owners. It, it, it's, it's... <clears throat> 
And the world size gate goes back to the Jones plantation. They got to choose between Mr. Jones yeah. and Mr. Smith. But the whip still fell on the back. It's like by when giving the people, people didn't follow the rules. It's by having a choice. You know, you you abstract some stuff. So, so these are obfuscated. You think you've got to say so. Meanwhile, they're just as evil as they ever were. Yeah. They're just as shitty as they ever were. I actually no. This is funny because I was I um a while ago when Dad came uh, over to visit. Um. He was, there was this discussion, there was, you know, it was the Republican Party starting to ramp up for the, the 2016. And, um, Ted Cruz was talking about, like, I think he was talking about, um, taxes. And I just walked into the, you know, I kind of briefly overheard it. My dad is a, I would argue he's a rhino or, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. He's just a typical... I'm just laughing at that term rhino because I'm not even sure what that means yeah, anymore. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't know what that means. What does that it's, mean? Well, it means Republican in name only, yeah. but what the what is a Republican? So, anyways... <laughs> Somebody wants to make America great again. Um, <laughs> so, my dad says something along the lines of, like, well, Ted Cruz is talking about um, yeah. reducing taxes, and I, and I was like... I looked over at him, and I was kind of buzzed, and I sat there and said, he's a thief, Dad. Why do you care? And he said, well, he's not a thief. He's never stolen anything, as far as I know. I said, every politician steals, Dad. And he's like, I don't want to get into this with you. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, he's a good guy. I was like, no, he... He's my heart choice, Danny. He he is... (laughs) He's just, they're all thieves, and yeah. they're all murderers, and no one has the guts to say anything, or at least I hate the entertain same wall. the yeah. notion of it. Was that, the same not the most, father. was that not the biggest pile of nonsense that yes. I posted earlier? And all, the That's comment- the reason why I reposted it, because it was fucking, I was like, <laughs> Joe's spot on. This is how retarded people are. <laughs> I got that from somebody else, and it was supposedly a quote. I don't know who they were quoting. We're talking about a post I shared on Facebook today. Um, somebody went all out about Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz was their heart choice. He, <laughs> he prays to God every day, and therefore... The God that doesn't exist. If, <laughs> oh, that even, even if you're a total Christian, you could still say this is complete bullshit. I don't because know about that. you don't even... He's telling you he's praying to God. It could be like George Bush. He's pretending to pray to God because he knows your stupid ass will vote for him because he said that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're sociopaths. <laughs> so there, there was like so many layers of nonsense in that post. It was, it was hilarious. In the comments under because when I posted it, I didn't put it in quotes. I didn't say it was from somebody else. I just posted it like it was my yeah. thing. And pe- people were like, what the fuck what just happened? <laughs> well, who's Joe? I, I thought I know this, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is sarcasm. You do. You know me a little better than so I have 1,200 friends. They don't all know me that well. And we've had, one of them pointed this out, we have had a series of anarchist ghosts, like, anarcho status I don't know what no, you no, want no, to call it. There's lately. Marcel Fontaine, the giant faggot that doesn't understand and, any economics, and then there's Cat Cutwell. <laughs> Cutwell. <laughs> who I, doesn't understand that voting doesn't matter. I mentioned this in another show, but I unfriended... Listen to you, Trump supporter. I unfriended... Are you, guys, are you guys like buddies? You go out to Trump rallies together? I un- yeah, we, we also jerk each other off. And <laughs> we got Mike talking from behind the camera. We can't No, I, I mentioned this in, in another We're gonna show. We're going to have a brown baby, Mike. Oh, brown baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not fair, man. If a yeah. baby with a brown person, it's always brown. Yeah, it's, bullshit, it's always man. brown. Um, Racism. Um, you should be. Oh, I was going to say. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go somewhere. <laughs> not You're talking about show. poop. No. Oh, okay. Are you talking about Chris Campbell? Um, yeah, well, anyway, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's get Campbell back. Campbell is full of poop. I unfriended him when he came out and said... If you start arguing against me about this Trump nonsense, I'm gonna unfriend you. And I thought, this, I'm, I'm not gonna be silenced by that threat. 
So, so you, yeah, I just, so you silenced yourself. Yeah, because because my <laughs> choice was to either. If you disagree with me, I'm going to unfriend you. Yeah, this. my choice yeah. was to either I'm create right, for myself an echo chamber where no, everything I say. I would. That's argue, like you great. can't fire no. me. I quit. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was. Uh, the the point was, I wasn't going to hold my tongue to every one of his posts and be a statistic of a liker of his or a, a friend of his. I would have just put on there, go fuck yourself, you piece of shit. And so I just left. I just unfriended. I don't. I don't follow people that closely. Yeah. Pay so it's like to screw it. this. And no, I, he I blocked pra- me. Huh? He blocked me. See, that's what he was because you probably said something to him. No, I didn't say anything. How to many him. people what have I, blocked I, you? <laughs> <laughs> you probably kept the you biggest block list more, out by more people than I my friend list. Because <laughs> I'm. Probably one of the most honest assholes out there. You also post comedian stuff. I would agree with the second part of that statement. And Uh, you also post comedian stuff, and you don't say it's comedian stuff, and people think you're serious. Comedic, yeah. If people can't figure out sarcasm, they're fucking retarded. (laughs) (laughs) You don't want them to be your friend. Then they're retarded because I have that problem very... Yeah, like you with trannies. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, hey. It wasn't I, my I, fault, I, you know, I that we, she we, was standing we, up peeing in the bathroom. I, 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 I think thought we kind of was... killed the voting topic. And, and yeah, the voting topic. All right. We're, we're kind of moved on. Dave, Mike how has much got, time got on the camera? We, we've got About 50, 30 minutes? 52 minutes on this. Uh, oh, no, no, on, oh. on mine. Just give them like a thumbs what up. What does it go It goes, it's 120 minutes. Matt, you're at 53. we got a lot of time. Quit talking. Okay. Yeah. Don't so Mike's got a topic. He visited a courtroom while there was some court activities going on. <laughs> that would have been a good time. <laughs> and, uh, All right. Our, our, our mutual friend Danny Damon a couple weeks ago put something on about the Legault uh, case, the uh, CPS, Child Protective Services case, oh, in the uh, court in Detroit. And I didn't have to work the next day, so I went down there and observed and... Uh, it's a uh, you know it's a complicated case. They had uh, three of their kids taken away about a year and a half ago, and then their baby was born four months ago. Oh, and, I remember. Yeah, I remember reading about. Yeah, that. the baby Mia was taken away at birth, and uh, it's just a pretty fucked up case, you know. At birth. Yeah. Well, two days old, and they had been like of, smoking weed or some shit. Yeah. See, they 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 hired a. Uh, so the uh, pre-trial was a couple weeks ago. The trial started. Tuesday. I didn't make it over there until uh, Thursday afternoon, and it was a little, I wasn't even sure if it was still going on, but it worked out well because the, um, the, uh, it was the closing, I got, I caught, I got there like 20 minutes, 10 minutes before the closing argument, so I heard a lot of good stuff. I heard both closing arguments and the judge's ruling. Apparently, they must have waived a jury trial because the judge ruled it was supposed to be a jury trial. So it was uh, pretty interesting. The judge, uh, very small courtroom, you know, maybe 15, 20 feet by 30 feet, you know, smaller than my living room. Damn. There was yeah, um, there's some small courtrooms. Out. There was two other observers, which were the grandparents. So, but, you know, I, I like to think I have a pretty high bullshit detector and, you know, I... No, you don't. Fuck you. <laughs> What about that, that trick you were dating with the... All right, let, 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 let him finish. Come on. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> first you talk oh. about trannies. I I teased a tranny in the bathroom at PenguinCon last year. I was like, dude, you know, I think you're in you, the wrong bathroom. You teased her. <laughs> yeah, well, so I made a tranny cry. I'm sorry, you know. Oh, no. Well, I made a geez, lot of women Mike, cry. You're going to go and raping them and everything. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Quit with your fucking tranny fantasies with me. <laughs> Should have the podcast I right kids, after Daniel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I yeah, have no idea we'll where I was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm talking about a. This a serious is serious issue here. Oh my god! Shut the fuck up. Yeah, he, you're he, brown. He's, he's talking about you're a serious issue. Talk. Yeah, token. You know, you're, you're token. You're just our token <laughs> brown person. You know. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. What was her name, James? <laughs> Go clean the fucking bathroom and shut the fuck up. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. I have no clue where I was. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I don't even know where you were either. You were in the tiny courtroom with the tranny. No. It wasn't a tranny. <laughs> 
you can tease me in a few minutes, okay, Danny? Let's, we got, let's, let's get back to this. All right, all right. Tiny courtroom. Okay. <laughs> let's not turn this into episode five. I'm trying not to. It's Have you been so drinking? Good. Yeah, I'm on, like, beer six. <laughs> okay. Quit watching the tranny porn on the way I'm drinking. The I'm drinking a a, a a red volution. Nobody cares. And <laughs> and I'm not going crazy. He's going and come on us with his red wine. No, red from volution. the proletariat. <laughs> Do you guys know any anticops? Uh, yeah. James Weeks is probably the closest proxy. James what Weeks here? changes. Yeah, I can't bear to see that. What's that? No, what kind of whiskey do you want? Uh, it's a smaller bottle on uh, right in front of you, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mike, can you tap the record on that? Fuck off. Thanks, yeah. man. You gotta hit it and wait 15 seconds, and then no, just double it. tap it. You'll be fine. You can't double. Yeah. You gotta wait for the light to stop blinking. I don't know where to record, but it's red. It's red. I'm colorblind. <sighs> Right. When the green light stops blinking, you're ready. Okay, go. Hit no, it again. Hit it again. Yeah. Hit it. Yeah, because Joe's camera sucks. I've only got the good camera. All We've right. mentioned this in another episode, but my camera so, sucks because of the government. All right. Danny, are you, you done fantasizing about, fantasizing about trannies for a minute? Seriously. I, I, I'm done We We have a serious topic to here. We, okay. We spent like eight I was talking. I, I, I apologize. Danny has this uh, obsession with transvestites. And You're in the small courtroom. And it hurt him that I, I no, made it, one cry. This is... <laughs> he thought he was going to get lucky that night. I had to edit some stuff. Ah, no, no shit. Anyway, no. great. No, it's okay, uh, so we have a really serious it's a very topic sad here. Case, it's actually a, a serious case. case. I, uh, so I went to the, fir- the, the pre-trial, and... Um, you know, I I uh, walked in and I ended up sitting in the lobby. And then the woman that sat down next to me was uh, the woman in the case. Um, so anyway, I I did talk to them for a couple hours, and I, I I went to the second case. And I like to think that you know I made a difference just being there. There's just a few people there. You know, the judge saw that I was taking notes. I don't. He didn't know who I was. So I think I think it is. Uh, a valuable thing if uh, people want to go and observe court cases that uh, there's a lot of bullshit in this system. And, you know, the case against the C- CPS, uh, who, Carlos Morales, that's a really good book. Yeah. But, that's um, a good book. you know, oh, I think I heard there is case. a lot of, you know, it's it's legally kidnapped. I think, what is it? The legally kidnapped. Yeah, I listened to his book CPS. tour. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Uh, I've heard a lot of his podcasts. I'll put a link to the to the. Um, I'll try to find something about that and put it in the show. And they have, uh, you know, I mentioned that to. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but anyway, I mentioned that to her, and they have been in contact with Carlos, and they love him. So, um, the people in the case. Yeah. Oh wow. So he does like some assistance work. We have they've go. been going through this for a year and a half. It's some. Uh, oh wow. So yeah, they they had the three kids taken away. It's kind of a long. Uh, story, you know, there was a, uh, you know, the woman was attacked by the, uh, her in-laws, and then, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a long story, you know, I'm sure they're not perfect people, I don't, of course, but, you know, and, but the thing is, is once, once you're in the system, then it's all bullshit. It's know? all designed to keep you in They've it. They've lived in the same house for four or six years. They bought the house and didn't get uh, title insurance. Found out that the person they bought it from owned, didn't own the house, and um, or he owned the house, but he uh, owed taxes on it. So it soon got um, taken away by the state. But they've been living there the whole time. Uh, they told me that they went to try to pay for the house a couple a year or so ago, and. Uh, you know, the city told them, just hold off. we got this program coming up. You'll be able to buy it back. And, um, you know, their caseworker, you know, who was in the lobby a couple of weeks ago when I was there, he just, you know, he said, you guys are doing everything perfect. They've been doing what they're told. They got, you know, it's just a fucking money system. These people, once they get in there, they, they're under control. You're saying the they thumbs. had to rent another house that they didn't They rented in. another house for six months so they could get visits with their kids to take them home. 
Because they weren't allowed to take him to the house that they didn't own. Yeah, they even though they in. had They're living utilities in, a house. in their house for and yeah. you know, on their name for a few years. And they didn't own it because of the whole thing with the property tax thing, and they were going to get a chance to buy it back. Yeah. And, and they, but they, they had to go rent They the live house. in Detroit, and they said they've got neighbors that don't even have, you know, gas or electricity in their homes who have kids, and they don't have any problems, you know. But, but once but you're mixed up in the system, into the system, you're fucked. Yeah. And, um,. So, so yeah, the, uh, so they did have a little bit of, you know, the, uh, their caseworker actually stood up after the verdict because they did lose this trial to get their newborn baby back. And, uh, the caseworker after the trial said, yes, I did call them. And, and what they said is true that there is a program in place that they can't give anything in writing because they're like, they can't say that these people are squatters and that they have a right to live here because that's just, you know, you can't say shit like that. <laughs> you know, this is a legal, legal oriented society, so they can't say shit like that. But everything they said checked out by their caseworker that's their advocate and the caseworker that's trying to fuck them over, apparently. But everybody said that, yeah, they're doing everything right, but, you know, they're kind of like angry and stuff like that. How the fuck couldn't you be angry when your kids are gone? I don't even know how these people can handle it. Yeah. How could you not be angry? So It's like the they, they take your kids from you, and then you get really mad, and then they yeah. say you're unstable, so that you can't... You know, you're too unstable to have kids, because you're mad that your kids were kidnapped by the government. So the, uh, the judge spoke for about 10 minutes, saying positive things about the parents, that they've been doing any, everything, they've come, you know... Unlike a lot of other cases he's seen, they really do are trying to get their kids back. They're trying to do everything right. You know, that the people are trying, you know. And, um, but they're up against a fucking model, yeah, like yeah, gigantic right. system. And, uh, anyway, he ruled against them and his main, he had two points. He went on for over 10 minutes about how, what a good job they've been doing. He had two points. Number one was the house, which I think should have been addressed a little bit better by their lawyer. But their lawyer, there was a, a, a marijuana issue. The reason they took the baby away, oh, yeah. according to them, was that they said the baby tested positive for marijuana. And she said, that's bullshit. And he got all that thrown out. The, the lawyer or the judge you know, it took him five minutes to say it, but he said that the the marijuana thing is a non-issue, you know, because they're both medical marijuana users. The baby and the mother both did not test positive for marijuana at the baby's birth. So that means she had to quit for at least a month or whatever, you know, if not longer. Mm-hmm. You know, according to her, as soon as she found out she was pregnant, she quit smoking weed. I wonder where know? they came from, like that whole charge. The CPS. The- they just you know, what they're up. telling me is they... They make these things up and put them on there, but once they get to the next phase of the thing, that stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't Apparently matter how they up. got into the system. Yeah. They're in the system now. They're fucked. Yeah. Once you're so in, now that, it, it, yeah. The only, so, once you're in the system, you have to like get to a point where you can get out briefly. Yeah. They'll try to pull you back in, but then you just have to like move yeah, to another country or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. You just have to leave. Otherwise, you're stuck in this. So, yeah, basically, I got there at, like, 2.12 p.m., which is a good, uh, uh, you know, I didn't make it the first couple days, but it was perfect that I got there when I did. But, um, you know, the um, there's two things that when he ruled against them that he said was the uh, the housing situation, which I think they could have done. I think if they could have proved that situation, they would have been all right. And... Um, like I said, I did not see the trial, but for some reason the parents didn't uh, testify. You know, that's the normal thing lawyers recommend. I don't know. You know, they they probably are a little bit angry. Maybe they didn't want them to, you know, you know, the prosecutor could have probably made them look bad. But anyway, the two things, he, he went on and on that said this is bullshit. You know, the, the judge sounded like he was going to rule in her favor, but the house I knew was going to be a problem because when the uh, he asked the uh, lawyer... You know, so where's their deed? And he said, well, you know, his point was, you know, they would still have to get evicted. And, uh, 
you know, they don't own the house, but they'd still have to get evicted. But he didn't really present any evidence. And then he did try to refute something or, or, or present something. And the prosecutor objected and said, well, you know, that wasn't presented into evidence. You know, you can you can only refute things that were into evidence. So the lawyer couldn't just come up with stuff New in evidence. his closing arguments. He couldn't just say this is what happened or whatever. So, you know, I think probably they could have, you know, done a better job with that. But he was a medical marijuana lawyer because I guess, according, uh, you know, according to the, the, the golf set before this point that the uh, they were really getting beat up on the marijuana issue. But. You know, they were, you know, the, the prosecutor saying, well, these numbers were like way higher than the numbers that they're supposed to be. And what the, numbers were you talking about? <sighs> I don't know, but the numbers, the, the, the defense lawyer came up and said, well, the numbers you're talking about are of the metabolite, you know, the number of whatever metabolizes when you smoke marijuana oh. as compared to what the actual marijuana in your bloodstream was. And it's like two totally different grading yeah, systems. So compare the things. Yeah. yeah. So they're just trying to confuse the issue about whether or not. The kids yeah. Had and this guy actually, system. this guy understands the marijuana issue and he was able to just throw that. That was not even an issue anymore. You know, the parents do not appear to be drug users. There was never any accusation or mention because they didn't mention a lot of stuff. There was never any mention of them doing anything besides smoking weed. And, uh, which, you know, I don't smoke weed. I haven't smoked it for a long time. But when my kids were little, I smoked weed. And according to these people, I probably didn't deserve to be a parent, you know? <laughs> yeah, so they're going to kidnap your kids, put them in a foster home. The kids will get raped and, and get killed. Yeah, they've had some I pretty mean, this is actually scary happening. shit happen. No, they've had some scary shit. Yeah. They got accused of stalking because they brought up some stuff about one of the foster parents who had some really scary, freaky shit on Facebook that I I, I saw, and it was like, and it scared us. Sh- kind of, I don't know how these people could, what oh, kind of shit was all crawling thing? around naked, saying he's trying to keep himself off the sexual predator list. This is a person that has one of their children in their care. So, and then, That's what I hear about mm-hmm. CPS and foster parents. It's just a den of pedophiles. Yeah, CPS it's... is a horror story. I think it was Tom Woods interviewed. Who was the guy who wrote the book on the CPS? Carlos Morales. Carlos Morales. Carlos Morales. He, I think he was on the Tom Woods show. It's a quick 30-minute um, listen uh, that'll give you a really good um, feel for the nightmare that is out yeah, there. Yeah, he's been on that, uh, School Sucks more than once, too. Yeah. Didn't Tiffany have an issue with CPS? <laughs> I don't know. Tiffany, Tiffany Alano. Alano. Yeah, she yeah. still does. Oh, She's... Tiffany Alano? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's a complete nightmare. Yeah. yeah. She's living a horror story. And it's not just CPS, though. That's, um, she, you know, yeah, her story is more complex than that. I don't know. They're that. always complex, though. That's... Yeah. People, they're not going to get the fucking people that are perfect. If they can get you in the system and they can make money off you, they're going to fucking hurt you. Yeah. And it's no, like but that I mean, with the, any government, kind of the government came court. after her for being an anarchist, essentially, is, is what it comes down to. And it, yeah, if you not, start to fight them, you know, yeah, it's not just CPS that's after. But yeah, that's what this person, yeah. you know, that's what the they thought maybe that, you know, they went to the CPS director at the beginning and said this person's you know fucking us over. And you the know. Late, the latest thing from Tiffany was her ex husband. Her child had a black eye, and she documented it with her phone. And then her phone got confiscated somehow. I don't know who took it. Because her ex-husband didn't want her documenting, didn't want her um, recording her kids' rashes. Yeah. And, and, and that that's, I mean, there's so much just nonsense with this stuff. So, I mean, there's really no good point to end on here. But, but how um, could you? How could you not go crazy? <laughs> what a way to put a downer on the end of the show. But no, um, I mean, well, let's. We're not quite done. But I mean, how could you let's not? Give it a, let's 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 turn around. Let's put the anarchy twist on this. You have kids. We we've been talking no. about how horrible CPS is. I think we've we've made that case. Um, well, let to, me finish off with this oh, real we, quick. We're, okay. So anyway, they. Um, you know, the judge ruled against them on getting their baby back, which was mostly due to the 
the house situation, which I think if uh, their advocate, you know, their court appointed ag advocate has worked for the state for like 23 years. So, you know, he's probably, you know, he's works with these people every day for the last 23 years. So he may be their advocate and he does seem to, you know, he's, he's, I heard him say it to him, you know, you guys have been doing everything perfect, but he does work for the state with the system. But he spoke up in their defense after the verdict, which I think it would have been better if he'd done it beforehand. I don't know court rules and all that, but, but he said he called the city and yes, there's this program and it's just starting out. And, you know, these people are going to have a chance to buy their house back and they need to stay there with continuous utility bills for the last year to, to be eligible for this program. So, you know, is it like a credit thing. Is that what it is? Uh, they want to see a year's worth of paid bills or something like that. Basically, it's like a squatter's, uh, squatter's rights kind of thing. Yeah. So, but, but basically that, you know, was the main issue. And there was another issue when the, just a week ago they had their, uh, the, the, the CPS said they can't take the one child because of, um, you know, it needs to go to the, the son needs to go to the doctor because he had some breathing problems, uh, bronchitis or something like that. And, uh, according to the CPS person that they said that they would take them to the, take the son to the doctor. And, uh, so they let them take the kids and they did not take them to the doctor. A woman, like I said, I did not see the trial, but the woman tried to speak up and say, that's not true. And the judge interrupted her and said, you know, you know, this is the trial's over. This is, you know, you, you had your chance to say that. It's too late now. So, so the two reasons that he stated were the housing situation, which from what I heard in court alone, not, to, not to mention what I heard from them, from what I heard to them, from them and in court, I mean, I think their housing situation is reasonable. It's safe. And you know, what they're doing is, is reasonable. Yeah. They were stupid. They got fucked over on a deal, but. You know, they are, you know, even according to the CPS agent and their C, you know, but, but anyway, so the judge ruled against them on taking their baby back, but he says he wants to see the child, the children go back to them. They're doing everything right. And, you know, they get, they make them go to this class and this class and, you know, she's got a, I don't even want to go into it, but, you know, I don't want to cause any negativity for them, but basically... The judge ruled against him, but he said he's going to take personal responsibility for it. He's going to, he call, called for a hearing in one month from now in March. And I think if anybody has a chance to go to that hearing that lives in the Detroit area, they should do it. So you mentioned before to me that after one of these hearings, somebody sat down next to you and said that they felt pretty strongly that Things would have gone differently if you weren't there. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this up. Because this is something that people could do on an individual level yeah, I, that could affect people's lives. And, and that's why I wanted I to bring this up. I felt like I made a different difference. You know, I, I sat there, I took some notes, and, you know, these people don't know who I am. I could be a reporter. You Didn't know, somebody I'm, say something to you, though? I thought you said that to me before. Did somebody thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Somebody thank you for being there. And who, who yeah, was they that? thought, uh, the. The father, he's, you know, okay. he's thought that I might have made a difference. And yeah. I felt like I did make a difference. I don't know if I did or not, but I don't think I heard. I think it, I think the more Cause they feel these people like know that they're being watched. Yeah, being if you know, watched. if you know somebody's watching you, you're gonna, your, your whole paradigm, your, your thought process yeah. is gonna be a little different. So I think it's very important to, to watch cases that you think are, you know, possible injustice. Yeah. You know, part of it for me was I wanted, you know, I didn't have anything else to do, but I also wanted to see what I thought, you know, my own judgment. Yeah. You know, because I heard a lot of horror stories about CPS. Is this really, and I, I think this is kind of a horror story. And It is. You know, it's, you know, like I said, they're not perfect people, but no. who is? But, Nobody is. But that doesn't give you the right to kidnap their children and 
yeah. and put them into a, a situation that's worse, you know? I mean, one of the things that's brought up is the kids are having discipline problems in school, and it's like the, How the they judge not? said, you know, you, you bring said. them out of their kit, their, their home, who's to say that, well, you they know, it's, they've been out of their home for a year and a half, and you're going to, how can you blame the parents? How how do you know it's not because of that? I, yeah. I didn't hear any problem, you know. The judge any, said that? The judge seemed to, like, that's why I, I wonder if I did have an effect on it, because the judge was very positive, said he wants to see them get their kids back. He he asked the CPS, like, I want to know right now what these people need to do to get their kids back. What are the programs they need to complete? What do they need to do? Because, you know, according to the Legalts, they would be told to do uh, something you know, after the fact, you know, after, you know they after it was too they, late. They, 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 do these yeah. things, they do these things like, well, actually, you need to do this. Thing yeah, they would. They would get the. They, they would say you got to do this, but they would never give them the order or you know to 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 actually pull carry. Some it of that through. could just come down to the incompetence of the. Government. Oh yeah, it sounds like. Yeah, they, I think there's some incompetence, and they said I don't want to get into too many details because I don't want to like hurt their case, but I I think it is a I think it's important to. Keep an eye on these things, and I, I think you know we as uh, individuals can make a difference in this. And I don't know if I have, but you know I think you know they had a tough case, and I think the the judge, to his credit, <laughs> it was kind of funny. He's like points up. I think it was this side. He points up to the the symbol of the state. And he's like, <laughs> I am. I was like, he's like, I am you know, representing the state, or I am, you know, this, yeah. we are the state, and this is what we got to do. We are the, but, we are the state. <laughs> the <laughs> criminal <laughs> enterprise so, that preys upon people and steals but, from them and tells them what to do under threat of violence. I think he could. <laughs> I think in his own paradigm, I think he realizes that this is probably not a good situation for yeah. the kids and that the parents are, are, are good parents. And I think if they had shown their case a little better on the housing situation that maybe they would have got the kids back, you know, yesterday, but, or day before yesterday, so. Yeah. That's about it. But, you know, I hope them the best, and, uh, you know, I have never observed a court case other than my own before, and I've seen some fucked up shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for so, traffic. So, I, traffic, I, I but, think we're, we're kind of at the end of the show, but there is another topic. I, I, we don't really have time to bring it up now, but, um, what and, and the topic would be, how would this work in a stateless society? I, I think we need to have a show on that, but, uh, any, anybody have any closing words bef before we close out the show? Yeah, that would be, uh, I don't know how it would work, you know. Yeah. There's well, some things that I don't know, you know. There's some things I have a real problem with with anarchy is, you know, environment is one of them, and protecting children from their parents is another one. You know, how do you, you know, how do you do yeah, that? Yeah, this is a whole show topic right there. Well, there's, you know, yeah. a bunch of shows. Yeah. Definitely. So let's planner. Uh, so I have no idea. How yeah, have no idea, <laughs> and I'm not going to figure it out either. <laughs> I got to figure it out. Let's, let's bring this uh, up a notch. What can we do? <laughs> Danny, say some racist shit or something. No. <laughs> so have you met all, any new trannies lately? All I can tell you is that even in Ankapistan, Donald Trump would make Ankapistan great. Say something. <laughs> <laughs> Shut her down. <laughs> <laughs>